Are you tired of constantly being overlooked and underappreciated? Isn't it frustrating to date men who treat you and the relationship like just another option? Don't tell anyone I told you, but there's actually a secret method to preventing this from ever happening again. Which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing how to be a priority and not an option. That way, for once, you can be the dream woman who he chases and pursues and not the one who he tries to trade in for someone new. Number one, the mindset change. If you are of the mind frame, I need to do as much as I possibly can do so that you like me and you're interested in me and you choose me and you pick, pick, pick me in the snap of a finger, in the blink of an eye, your entire life has transformed to being about what that man wants and whether or not he approves of you. So where do you think you're going to place all of your value? on his approval and validation of you. That is a very, 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 very horrible place for you to be in mentally because your self-esteem will be in the dumps if you're not receiving validation and he can also take you over the moon just by giving you some simple validation. Do you know what that translates to? That translates to control because he has control over your emotions. He has control over your own self image and you need to transform that and change that into approaching your relationships from the complete opposite standpoint that I'm here to see if you can earn my approval. When a guy, let's say you're going on, on dates with a guy, I want you to be every time you're on these dates, don't be thinking about oh, did I say the right thing that you like that thing that I said? Do, am I holding my fork the right way that if you don't think, if you think that I eat too fast on my date, that you're going to be thinking that um, I'm kind of gross or I'm kind of like a pig or I'm not like really womanly like. No, no, no. When you go out on these dates, I want you to be thinking, I already know the value I carry and we're here to interview you, sir, please, please. I hope you brought your suit because I got my notebook and I got my pencil and my iPad. And I'm here to jot notes down because you're here for an interview because I'm determining if you're the person for the job to be with me. If I'm if I'm going to be investing my time and energy into you. And if you're not that man, well, then you're going to get uh, thrown by the wayside because there's a thousand other men lined up here for the same job interview. That's the mindset I want you to be bringing into your dates. Now, obviously, I don't necessarily want you to say that to him, but that mindset change is going to change your approach and it's going to change the way you go about each and every date. You're going to be focused on each and every date, not just about feeling good and being in la la land and having him compliment you a thousand times. You're going to be on those dates saying to yourself, are you the man that I'm looking for? Are these signs or are we moving in the direction that I actually want to be moving in based on what type of relationship I actually want? If we're not moving in that direction, then I damn sure am not going to be spending my time and energy on you. If we are moving that direction, then congratulations, you've earned a little bit more of my time and energy. I know it sounds very selfish. That's because it is. That's because that's what you need to do in order for people to treat you like a priority. Number two, you need to begin prioritizing your needs. This is where I want you all to be paying attention because I know this is where I'm going to lose some of you guys because you're thinking in here, but I just want tips and tricks to get him to text me back in 45 seconds or less. I just wanted tips and tricks to get him to send me more Snapchats throughout the day. I just, no, you need to understand that if you want a specific type of treatment from men, especially from men, you need to start by treating yourself that way because he wants to get to know you. You are at an advantage. You don't have to do anything because he's already letting you know he's the one that wants to get to know you. So because he is the one that wants to pursue you, you don't need to start doing more things for him. But a lot of you are making that mistake because the moment you meet a guy and you like a guy, even if he's the one pursuing you, you start to feel like, oh, well, I need to start prioritizing your needs over mine because I got to show you how much I care about. No, no. No, for some of you, actually a lot of you, you've spent so little time prioritizing your own needs, you don't even know what your own needs are. So when I say prioritize your needs, you're honestly like, I don't, I honestly don't know. I don't know what I need. I don't know what's important to me. I don't know what I should be doing aside from being with a boy. My whole life is being with a boy. And for my entire life, it's only been about going from one boy to the next. If you're not sure what your needs are, if you're not sure of what your priorities are in life outside of being in a relationship, you first need to take a step back from the relationships, take a breather, and then you need to do some exploring in your life to figure out what your needs are, to figure out what's important to you 
outside of a relationship and to figure out how you fit into this world as an individual. Once you get those answers, then you know the things that you need to continue prioritizing even while in a relationship. Then when you start dating again, those are the things that you keep your focus on even while you continue dating someone. When a guy can't shake you or move you simply by whether he gives you validation or takes it away, what then ends up happening is rather than you adjusting yourself constantly to fit more of what the men want, you you start figuring out are you going to adjust for me because I'm already whole number three as horrible as this will sound you need to sacrifice less this is where we're gonna have a real conversation I'm gonna tell you this from a man's perspective and how we talk amongst each other as men I'm just gonna be so for real okay uh, you we call it toxic if you want I'm just gonna tell you the truth of how men discuss this man when we talk about the girls that we can hit up at 2 a.m. and go over to their house and sleep with them I can assure you, we don't talk about them as if those are the women we're prioritizing in our lives. We might share stories about how, how crazy it is that as soon as I finished at the club after chugging down a bottle of Henny or chugging down a bottle of Bel Belvedere with my boys, I dapped them up and then I called my favorite eater up at 2.30 a.m. after I left the club and I stumbled and fumbled over to our place and I smashed and then I threw up and then I smashed again and then I left at like 4 a.m. and that was such a crazy story. But I can assure you after we laugh about that crazy story, he never once says, that's the girl I'm going to take serious. That's the girl I'm going to prioritize in my life. That's the girl I'm going to build a relationship with. Actually, actually, as crazy as it sounds. After he tells that story, a lot of times he then goes on to talk about the girl who he really wants to be with, but he's still working on her because, you know, she's not easy and he can't get easy access to her. Why? Because the guys know that certain girls they can call at 2.30 a.m. and stumble and fumble over to their place and smash after the club. They would not dare, not dare to ask certain girls that because they know it would absolutely ruin their chances of being with them. I say all that to say you need to sacrifice way less than you've been sacrificing for men because that's the only way they start treating you like a priority. Sacrificing sleep, you're sacrificing money because you're taking off shifts to be with him. You're sacrificing whatever you need to sacrifice so he'll pick you. In the end, it only makes it easier to overlook you when you're sacrificing everything for him. Point number four, you need to separate yourself. This is so great. I want all of you to pay attention. Those of you that listen to Shira and you like that advice on how to get rich men and how to get the super high, 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 high value men, the men that make millions of dollars and drive Porsches, please listen up. You have to be thinking from the perspective that if I can identify he's rich, if I can identify he's attractive, if I can identify that he's uh, really, really desirable, if this is a single man, that must mean he has come across many other women. Now, let's do some critical thinking. Do you think that if you can quickly identify those qualities in him and why he would be a desirable husband, do you not think that all the other women that have come across him in his entire life have also been able to identify the qualities in him that would make him a really desirable husband? The answer is yes, of course, they have also been able to identify that. So if your natural thought process, as soon as you meet a man that you find really desirable is, let me scrub the floor and do everything I possibly can to make you like me. What do you also think that those other women who he came across in the past have immediately thought after they thought to themselves, he's a really desirable husband. They have also thought to themselves, Oh my God, this is the high value, amazing man that I want in my life and want to make my husband. Let me figure out how to scrub the floor and put my maid outfit on to make him see me and pick me over all the other girls. And so funny enough, he actually has, think, picture this, he's got thousands of women with their maid outfit on, scrubbing the floor squeaky clean, all looking up at him saying, hey daddy, are you happy with how squeaky clean I scrubbed the floor? Hey daddy, do you see me? Look how, look how clean my towel is. And she's like, no, look how clean my towel is. Dressed in the same maid outfit with the same sponge, with the same dingy, dirty sponge, scrubbing the floor viciously, looking up at him, yelling and screaming, trying to get his attention. Literally thousands of women, they're all doing the exact same thing. It becomes literally impossible for him to pick any one of those girls out and say, you're going to be the priority. I want you to picture in that sea of women, there is one woman standing up, looking over in the distance, 
with her hair blowing in the wind, not even turned in his direction, admiring the sunset. With a little twinkle in her eye and he can barely catch just the uh, ever so slight glimpse of her. And she's not even paying any attention or mind to anything that's going on here with this sea of thousands of women on their hands and knees scrubbing the floor. I want you to actually visualize that. Then I want you to think to yourself, which woman do you think he's actually going to approach? One of the thousands of women who are on their hands and knees scrubbing that floor squeaky clean, begging for him to notice? Or do you think he's going to approach the woman in the far distance who isn't even looking in his direction, got her hair blowing in the wind, watching the sunset, paying him no mind? So when I give you that visual, do you see how the way to separate yourself in all irony is actually by doing nothing? Because the natural occurrence when you're doing nothing is that a man can take notice of you and find you fascinating enough that he wants to know more about you. It doesn't mean necessarily that any of those women who are on the floor squeaking, uh, scrubbing the floor squeaky clean are any less than. But you have to understand the way a man's mind works. He's not going to be able to differentiate or appreciate any of those women who are all doing the exact same thing the exact same way. The only woman he finds curiously interesting enough to approach is the one in the distance that's not really paying him any mind. And number five, I actually want you to find what's missing. With every man that you meet, in the process of you learning and growing and understanding him, you're going to get a sense of his trigger points, his traumas, but you'll get a sense of what is missing inside him. What void is existing inside him? And I'm not saying that you should change yourself, but you have to start thinking to yourself, how can I fit that void in a way that is unique to just me that will make him addicted to me because he can feel, fill that void without me. Now, this is not really about doing more for him. This is more about eliciting a feeling and an emotion inside him that makes him feel like the thing that I get from you, I can't get from any other source. Let's say you're going out on a date with the guy and in the process of getting to know him, you start to realize that one of the main things he's looking for in a relationship is the confidence to go out and try things and do things. And he's always in his head um, having paralysis by analysis, which just means like he spends so much time thinking and analyzing that he never actually takes takes action, but he needs that confidence to just say, no, you're capable of doing it. And I believe in you. Maybe let's say in the process of you understanding his life and his family life, you get the sense that he's never had someone to say, I actually believe in you. And when he's with me in person, 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 not over the phone, when he's with me in person, if I can do more things to help instill confidence in him, I'm filling a void that he's not able to just go out and get from anyone else. And it makes it that much more addicting to be with you because how am I going to be without you when you fill a particular void that's existed my entire life that I haven't been able to fill in any other of my relationships? This is when you start thinking about human beings on a way deeper level where you're analyzing things about them way deeper than anyone else is thinking about them, but you're also figuring out how, how what makes them tick what pushes their buttons, right? What motivates them? What inspires them? You now have the keys to be able to motivate him and inspire him to do anything you want.